Good day everyone. So I will be going to discuss about Wuchereria Bancrofti. So W. Bancrofti actually belongs to the kingdom Animalia and Phylum Nematoda and it is under the class Cisenente and order Sperorita and it is suborder Sperorina and it came from the family of Ancho Cercede. And now let's talk first about the morphology of W. Bancrofti. So we have here the microfilari or the embryo. This is the first stage of larva. And they are very active in their habits. And they can move both with and against the bloodstream. When sustained, they appear as colorless and transport bodies with blunt heads and pointed tails. So the microfilari measures about 290 millimeter in length by six to seven millimeter in breadth and this is what w bancrofti adult worms looks like they are minute long hair like transparent often creamy in color nematodes and filworm in shape with both ends tapering and the male measures 2.5 to 4 cm in length with 0 0.1 mm in thickness. And as you can see here, the tail end is curved ventrally and it contains two spicules of an equal length. While the female adult worms measures up to 8 to 10 cm with length with 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 mm in thickness or in other words the female adult worms are longer and thicker than the male adult worms and as you can see here its tail end is narrow and abruptly pointed and the female adult adult worms are known to be oviparous and the lifespan of these adult worms is long probably five to ten years or even more and this is the life cycle of W. Bancrofti. It actually undergoes two stages, the mosquito stage and the human stage. So first, during the blood meal, during a blood meal, an infective, infected mosquito introduces third stage filarial larvae into the skin of the human host, where they penetrate into the bite wound. And then they develop into adults that commonly reside in the lymphatics. And these adult worms produces microfilari that migrate into lymph and blood channels, moving actively through lymph and blood. And when a mosquito ingests the microfilari during a blood meal, and after ingestion, the mercury loses their sheets and some of them work their way through the wall of the proventriculus and cardiac portion of the mosquito's midgut and then reach the thoracic muscles. And there, the microfilari develop into the first stage larvae and subsequently into third stage infective larvae. So the third stage infective larvae migrate through the Nama coil to the mosquito's prosthesis and can infect another human when the mosquito takes a blood meal. So, in other words, the infection or the disease, the disease caused by this W. Bancrofti spread from person to person by mosquito bites. And this is the host and vector of W. Bancrofti. The Humans are the exclusive host of this inf of infection with W. Bancrofti and its vector are mosquitoes of genus Culex or Culex in urban or semi-urban areas. This includes Anopheles or Anopheles. In rural, it is found in rural areas of Africa and elsewhere. And we also have the Aedes in island. This is found in island of Pacific. So, what um, I have mentioned earlier that the infection spread from person to person by mosquito bites. And when, you, and when you are infected with this W. Bancrofti, this is what you can get. 
This is what we call the lymphatic filariasis or elephantiasis. Um, these filarial worms reside in the lymphatic vessels of the man and obstruct the flow of lymph there by causing se severe condition known as elephantiasis in which the limbs and other body parts grow into enormous size. And there are actually three different filarial species that can cause lymphatic filariasis in humans that most of the infection worldwide are caused by W. Bancrofty. And men with the disease can suffer from swelling of the cr scrotum. This is what we call filarial hydrocyl, the enlargement of scrotum. And now let's talk about the epidemiology of W. Bancrofty. This is actually largely confined to tropics and sub subtropics of Asia, Africa, Western Pacific, and parts of Caribbean and South America. And it is estimated that more than 120 million people are infected in 72 countries. And more than 25 million men suffer from genital symptoms and more than 15 million people suffer from elephantiasis of leg. And we have also case of lymphatic filiaresis in the Philippines. It was first discovered in the Philippines in 1907 and its total endemic provinces actually reach up to 46 provinces in 12 regions. And in 1984, 20 million people were considered at risk for filiaresis. 23.5 million in 2002 and as you can see it becomes it decreased up uh decrease 15 million in 2006 so this this is because um world health organization already come up with an idea on how to prevent the spread of this disease and this is the diagnosis of W. Bancrofty. So the standard method for diagnosing active infection is actually identification of the microfilar in the blood smear. This is through microsco microscopic examination. But a blood collection should be done at night to coincide with the appearance of microfilari. A thick smear should be made and stained with Gemsa or hematoxylene and eosin. And these are the treatment for patients currently infected with the parasite. Um, there's a drug that made in US. This is what we call the diethyl carbamazine. The, this drug kills the microfilari in some of the adult worms and this has been used worldwide for more than 50 years. There are actually side effects, but it is um, generally limited and depend on the number of microfilari present in the patient's blood. And the most common side effects are dizziness, nausea, fever, headache, or pain in the muscle or joints. And patients with hydrocell may have evidence of active infection but typically do not improve clinically following treatment with DEC. So the treatment for patients with hydrocele is surgery. And these are the prevention and control of the spread of this disease. So first, we have here the protection against adult mosquitoes. So the adult mosquitoes can be controlled by spraying the insecticides like organochlorides like DDT and BHC in the homes. Uh, fumigation of the dwelling places is also effective measure to kill the mosquitoes. Using mosquito net is the safest method to avoid the mosquito bite. Second, is the destruction of mosquito larvae. So spraying of kerosene, pyrethrum, oil, and the sewage gutters and ditches is recommended to kill the mosquito larvae. Insecticides are also used in breeding places to kill the larvae 
and there are some biological control using larvivorous larvivorous fishes like gambosha is much safer and actually we can help in preventing and controlling the spread of this disease and this is through cleaning our surroundings our our gods or seaweed our our drainage system and this is the end of my my report thank you for listening and keep safe